Welcome everyone to TechGeek's Project Management Webinar Series. Today's webinar is the first session of the three-part series. This session is an introduction to project management and will be conducted by Ravindra Prasad, Program Delivery Manager at Tesco HSC. Mr. Prasad has been in the IT industry for the past 13 years with program and project management forming a large chunk of his career. He also leads Project Management Competency Center at Tesco HSC, which has more than 500 members. Well, today's webinar session has a new twist up its sleeve. TechGeek is mighty glad for the continued support of its, of its ardent webinar audiences and wanted to show its appreciation for such great, great patronage. So we bring to you the best answer competition, which will be held during the session itself. Mr. Prasad will be asking certain questions all through the session and whomsoever answers it best according to our speaker will be awarded with one of the best books on project management called Project Management 24 Lessons to Help You Master Any Project, the MHPE series. You can answer these questions on this webinar's page on TechGig mentioned under the recent questions to speaker. Meanwhile, your questions for the speaker can be posted through the chat available in the webinar software. So without any further delay, I introduce to you our guest speaker, Mr. Ravindra Prasad. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is Ravindra. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today afternoon. And uh, I would like to appreciate your uh, time and then uh, uh, interest in project management uh, today afternoon. Welcome to all of you. Uh, so today what I'm going to do is, uh, surely I'm going to introduce what is project management all about and uh, as, the, uh, as my presenter uh, explained, this is the first session of the three project management uh, uh, seminars that we're going to have. So what I'm going to do today is I'll start with uh, a very brief introduction to what is project management and the uh, importance of project management in the current world. And uh, I'll touch upon uh, uh, five phases that are there in the project management. Again, uh, because of uh, the time constraints, I'll uh, go very high level on these areas. And uh, surely I do want to introduce uh, to the nine knowledge areas uh, that are pretty much important for a project manager to uh, either to start the career or to become successful in the uh, knowledge management career. I'm not going to read out all the uh, uh, nine areas, but you can uh, uh, see them in the slide. Finally, uh, towards the end of uh, this session, I'll touch upon uh, how somebody can uh, start a career in project management and a uh, few uh, certifications that are available in project management, how they can uh, help. Uh, someone either to uh, start the career or become expert or uh, if not the certification they can still do the project management so all those things I'm going to cover uh, again I would uh, uh, like to welcome all of you and uh, uh, before I go ahead with the presentation I would like close to 100 In uh, our core values, uh, there are two values. Uh, no one tries hard for customer, which means to treat our people uh, as we like to be treated. So these are the two core values. So uh, that's uh, part of my organization. I would like to also to thank uh, Tesco to uh, 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 encouraging me to give this presentation. So uh, before I talk about uh, as a project management as a sentence, I would like to split that as a project and then the management. <coughs> if you look at uh, a project, um, um, I mean, suppose if I ask this uh, definition straight away, what is project? Many people, uh, it's, it's very difficult for them to uh, define straight away. But I'll probably what I'll do is I'll uh, quickly take up an example and then explain. Suppose somebody is making a movie, uh, that's called project because uh, there should be a director, there should be a producer and the casting music director, uh, there should be a person who is going to write the script, story, all those things. So here uh, surely the director is the project manager and uh, usually we would not be doing uh, uh, I mean same movie twice so it's, it's a kind of a temporary endeavor. We will not be doing same movie whatever we did uh, once, we will not be doing that again. Maybe an exception would be Rangu Pulumar did Shole twice uh, but the second time he had to burn his hands. 
that's a different story. But uh, if you look at the definition, it's a temporary endeavor which is undertaken to create a unique product or service or result. What does this mean? Any project we would not be simply doing, uh, a, there should be an outcome from the project. And it is, uh, I would like to emphasize the point that it is the responsibility of the project manager to ensure that uh, uh, either the success or uh, failure of the project surely lies with the project manager. Nobody else can be uh, blamed for the success or failure. <coughs> Uh, the origin of the uh, world called uh, project came from uh, a Latin word uh, which, which, which says that to throw something forwards uh, which also means that to develop something uh, either from the scratch or uh, change something which is existing. When it comes to uh, management there are many definitions that are available in management but again suddenly if I ask someone what is management it's very difficult to uh, give a definition but I'll go with the uh, simplest definition. Uh, favorite uh, other Peter Drucker who he says that uh, management is all about doing the things right and uh, leadership is all about doing the right things and project manager as the life goes on uh, project manager also need to uh, take up the thing take up the things that are right <coughs> both are important but again management uh, has a uh, Latin uh, Latin origin uh, which is uh, uh, called menus which is in indirectly called as hand, but it also says that uh, uh, ability to handle the things. So uh, that's where the, the meaning is going to come into picture. So now what I'll do is I'll combine uh, these two words and then see uh, what is project management all about. So uh, it is the application of uh, knowledge and then the tools and techniques that probably we will touch upon few things today, uh, surely. And then uh, how do we meet those uh, requirements into the day-to-day -day project? So uh, why, uh, what makes project manager's life very uh, difficult as you can see in the uh, picture here, uh, project manager typically juggles with uh, many things. Uh, so there is a scope which comes from the stakeholders and the stakeholders also will have an expectation saying that my quality needs to be met. <coughs> Not, and at the same time stakeholders also will have the budget because nobody would say that I have infinite budget so uh, let's spend whatever the money we want. And at the same time, they'll also have an exp expectation on schedule, which means that uh, project manager has to deliver the project within a defined time frame. So having with all these constraints and uh, at the same time, project manager also will have to have the right people to deliver the uh, project. Uh, when I say resources, not just the people, but also the equipment, infrastructure, and uh, any other things that would help the project manager to uh, do the project successfully. Resources also can be... Uh, uh, when, the, when the person is working with let's say very big uh, projects and then uh, where the person has to uh, involve the government organizations all those things would come under resources and uh, while we uh, while the project manager juggles with all these things there could be something which is going to come and then hit uh, uh, like a risk or issue risk or something like if I give an example uh, sometime back we had uh, seen a tsunami in uh, Japan which uh, you also might have seen in the newspaper saying that Toyota they were not able to deliver the cars on time because uh, there was a hit on uh, um, their plants in uh, uh, Japan. So that is a risk. Uh, so there are uh, multiple things a project manager to uh, look into. Uh, again, a successful project manager can become successful uh, if, if the person is able to manage all those things very effectively. That's where uh, I would like to reiterate the definition of managing the things right that is very, very important for the project manager to be successful. So uh, in this webinar, anyway, I'm going to cover a very high-level view of uh, what are all these, what are what are all the things can be done by the project manager. Let's uh, go to the next slide. So I'll uh, quickly touch upon uh, the importance of uh, uh, project management. Uh, very recently, I think uh, ten days back, uh, there was an article published in Redif uh, uh, by Ministry of Statistics and Program. They uh, looked at uh, 560 infrastructure projects. These are uh, very specific to India, but I'll touch upon uh, what is happening in the world as well. Uh, so uh, again, each project is worth of 150 crores, and right now uh, close to 97% uh, of the projects are running late, and they are also uh, are in the over budget. If you look at the over budget, it is a very big amount, uh, which comes to close to 1,246 uh, billion rupees, which is, is a very very big number. And coming to the sectors, the railways, uh, they had a cost overrun uh, for 84% of the projects and the steel sector, they had a cost overrun for 63% of the projects. I had put the link uh, down, you can, if any of you are interested, you can quickly uh, see that. 
when it comes to uh, uh, all over the world, uh, uh, this is according to PMI, uh, one-fifth of the world's GDP is is being spent on projects which is close to 12 trillion dollars. This is the world statistics and uh, out of uh, in US alone uh, close to 40 percent of the workforce are going to leave the work or retire by 2015 uh, which means that there are a lot of uh, uh, job openings that would come when it comes to project management and uh, all these projects the 40 percent of the uh, workforce which I said they are uh, ideally they would uh, manage projects worth of uh, 4.5 trillion uh, US dollars which is uh, all this money at risk. So uh, surely all of us uh, can uh, learn some of the best practices that are available in project management and then make sure that uh, we do uh, contribute to the uh, industry and also to the world. I'll quickly take you through uh, five phases in the project management. Probably again I'll take some example here. Suppose let's somebody wants to uh, construct a house. Uh, so the first thing which they need to look at uh, why they need to construct a house, why can't they live in a rented house, let's say by having all those answers and then say they have a person has enough money to construct a house. First thing is to getting the thought of constructing the house. The second phase is uh, do the project planning. What it means is uh, uh, what is the location and then uh, what is the area that I can construct the house and then uh, uh, what is the money available and how can I, how much I can spend and then how long I am going to take this uh, for this construction and how many floors I should have how many windows, how many, uh, what is the color of the building and all those things. So that goes into planning. Once the planning is done, uh, the next important thing is uh, execute the project. Uh, so uh, this is the place where the actual uh, construction of the house is going to happen. Uh, surely the, if I say the owner is the sponsor of this project, uh, there should be, uh, the owner probably will have to hire a contractor or will have to arrange someone to make sure that all the work is done. I would uh, name that person as the, uh, let's say, project manager. This person is either uh, will uh, contract uh, contract every all the project to someone or the person himself might do the things. So, uh, so this is the place the actual work is going to happen. While the construction is going on, again, the uh, sponsor of the project manager, they, they'll have to monitor and control. In the real-time scenario, a sponsor would not do this. It is the responsibility of the project manager to do the monitoring and control. Finally, uh, we do the housewarming ceremony and then make sure that we go into the house, which goes with uh, closing the project and then uh, obviously if the house is good, uh, the owner and then the project manager will be happy about it. So, uh, these are the five phases I said and uh, there are the nine knowledge areas as I started uh, my presentation. Uh, I'll not read out all the things for you, uh, but uh, uh, but if you, if you look at the bars here, uh, from the left side to right side, you see initiation to closing and then uh, suppose if you take integration, it spans across initiation to closing. Suppose if you take risk, it is there only for planning and monitoring and control. Probably uh, you might have a question saying that uh, uh, will the risk be uh, not applicable for the initiation, execution and closing. The answer is uh, yes, it is applicable, but only thing is uh, our project manager's emphasis on doing the risk management uh, pretty much uh, in the phase of planning and then monitoring and control. However, the person has to uh, start the risk management early into the project. So that is important. So uh, to give some more brief around uh, uh, five phases, uh, you can look at here. The border that you can see, the uh, white border, sorry, uh, red border here. This is the project, I, I would say, project boundaries. There is going to be input which is going to be coming from the sponsor. In the movie example, it's going to be producer. So, um, and the project manager ideally will be allocated here so that the project manager will be able to start the uh, initiation process and all those things. Some cases, the project manager may be allocated after the project charter is ready. So once the charter is ready, um, project manager will be involved in doing the planning and then surely the project team will do the execution. While these two are uh, uh, going in iteration, iterative way, project manager will be the monitoring and control. The main purpose of monitoring and control is uh, uh, to make sure that things are going on well. So I have, uh, though I mentioned a few unsuccessful projects in India, I do want to give a credit to one person, uh, Mr. Sridharan, who did the delimiter project, uh, which actually uh, uh, the budgeted for close to $6.5 billion. And uh, that is uh, probably one project where it was uh, completed on time and uh, before the schedule. And in fact, uh, uh, not just on time before the schedule, and also uh, it was completed before the uh, with, with less money uh, compared to 6.5 billion dollars. And uh, one of the greatest attribute uh, that goes to his children is uh, the mounting and control that he does for the project. Every almost every day he goes to the site and then see how the work is progressing. 
So finally, the closing, pro closing process, once everything is done, uh, the project will get closed and then um, uh, we would uh, give the result back to the end user and also in case uh, if you have any process assets that needs to be, that can be stored within the organization that will go into first process assets. I'll start with the first knowledge area in this, uh, which is integration management. Integration management is all about uh, putting all the um, missing things into R, making the project into a cohesive unit so that we'll be able to deliver. You can also see uh, one globe and then uh, kind of a puzzle pictures. So this is the place where the project manager works to close this puzzle. I mean, uh, obviously, the project manager has to solve this puzzle. The person will be able to put across all the small pieces into bigger ones so that we'll be able to get the right outcome. Again, it is responsibility of the project manager to make sure that project is successful. So there are uh, uh, five, uh, six processes in this. Uh, I'll go one by one. First one is develop project charter. This is uh, ideally uh, responsibility of the project sponsor, but most of the times it is done by the project manager itself because the project sponsor, as I said, is kind of a uh, producer of the movie. So he, he is the person who is going to release the money. But the idea generation uh, either might come from the project sponsor or from the project manager or from the project teams, depending on the situation. So in this scenario, charter is a formal document which officially authorizes saying that uh, to the project manager saying that this is the time, this is the requirement for us, please go ahead and do the project. And also, it formally releases the money, uh, what project manager can uh, uh, use to deliver the project. When I say release the money, again, it goes with the organization to organization. Some organizations, they might release the money in a lump sum. Some organizations, they would uh, release the money in, uh, uh, in the batches. So that depends on the organization to organization. So uh, as soon as the project charter is ready, I have missed one more process here, but I'll touch upon that uh, in the communications management, which is identifying the stakeholders. So what does this mean? Uh, there is a requirement. We need to understand who are the users, who are the people who are going to get impacted positively or negatively by this project. So uh, after having those people, I need to come up with the something called project management plan. Project management plan is different from uh, the Microsoft project plan. So um, sometimes uh, even experienced project managers, they get confused between MPP plan and then the project management plan. Project management plan is all about uh, how uh, a project manager is going to uh, define the requirements uh, and then prepare how the project is going to run and then integrate all the uh, all the links and uh, finally make the project successful. <coughs> it also helps the project manager to uh, coordinate all the subsidiary plans. What, what I mean by subsidiary plans is, uh, so you have communications management plan, risk management plan, quality management plan, all those things. So again, depending on the project, suppose if a, if a project is uh, uh, multi-located, which is let's say it's there in seven countries with uh, 100 stakeholders, probably uh, having a separate communication management plan, separate risk management plan makes sense there versus let's say if there is a project there, just there is one stakeholder and then the team just located the one single place. Then we would combine all these things into one single project management plan. Third is uh, important one where the project manager has to uh, direct and manage the work. This is the place where the actual work is going to happen. And the fourth one is uh, uh, while the work is happening and as I said it's an iterative process earlier, planning and then monitoring and control. Uh, project manager has to look at, uh, collect the data and measure the performance and distribute right information to different stakeholders. And uh, uh, as the change is inevitable, as all of us know, uh, so while we do the project, a stakeholder might come back and say that I do not want that, I do want something else. So uh, I mean, a project manager can't say uh, straight away saying that I do not want to do this because this is not which I have agreed. But uh, the person uh, can look at uh, something called integrated change control using the uh, change control board. Uh, the person will take a call whether I want to uh, go ahead with this change or not. Finally, when everything is done, uh, if the results or product or the services are acceptable to the stakeholders, we'll close the project saying that this is all done. Uh, scope management is uh, very important. Again, as you see the picture here, uh, it is, uh, uh, as you can see, I mean, uh, I'm sure if you're married, you will come to know how difficult it is to uh, take care of our uh, kids. So they would, once they would ask, I want that, after, some, after five minutes, they would say, I do not want that. After 10 minutes, the person might, the kid might say that I never asked for it. So it is uh, pretty much similar to the way which our stakeholders work with us, especially in IT. However, as I said, it is, it is project manager's responsibility to make sure that all our stakeholders are happy always. So uh, now uh, I'll touch upon uh, what goes into scope management. It is uh, basically looking at uh, what is the work that is required and only work that is required and this is 
the assurance that are going to give to stakeholders saying that this is what which are going to deliver to you. So the first process here is uh, collecting the requirements. This is the place uh, where uh, we would say uh, we would speak to the stakeholders. As I said, we would uh, identify the stakeholders in the communications management process. So uh, here uh, we understand who are the stakeholders and then their needs. We need to go to them and then speak to them what are your needs and then uh, try to put across those needs into our projects. Second one is, uh, it is again up to the, usually the collect requirements process in IT scenario is done by the business systems analyst or business analyst depending on the organization or the functional analyst. Defense scope is a process where project manager would defend saying that, uh, yeah, these are the requirements which we collected, but this is what which I'm going to deliver to you. Some other things like non-functional requirements, functional requirements, technical requirements, all those things will be part of defense scope. And uh, as Henry Ford once said, uh, there is nothing particularly hard and complex unless it is divided into small jobs. So uh, it goes into the next one, uh, creating the work breakdown structure. Once if you have the requirement at very high level, it is again project manager's responsibility to uh, break the high level requirement to smaller pieces. Suppose if I uh, ask your, uh, if, if, if a project manager goes and asks the team member, uh, can you please uh, create a call for me? It's very difficult for the person to understand. But uh, but you can always say that, uh, yeah, you can uh, create one uh, door for me so that I'll be able to fit into the car. So if you look at the lowest level of the WBS is called work packages, and then there is one more level which is done, which I'm going to talk in the time, time management process, which is differing the activities. So work breakdown structure is a very important tool where we can uh, divide the work, bigger work into smaller pieces so that the total work itself will become very uh, smaller. <coughs> Socrates once said uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. This is again goes with uh, verifying scope. Once, uh, if you remember the flow, uh, we, we collected the requirements and then we defined the scope and then now in this process we are trying to verify the scope. So this is basically uh, stakeholders, these are, these are all what are your requirements and this is what I said I am going to deliver to you and uh, towards the end of the delivery I am going to say that uh, yes you said uh, uh, we need 100 things and then this is what which are delivering as 100 things. Things. So that's where the replace scope uh, goes into picture. And uh, last one is control scope here. And uh, again, uh, one saying which goes, uh, 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 who, he who controls the present controls the future as well. So it is again uh, uh, absolute responsibility of the project manager to look at uh, controlling the project scope. When I say controlling the project scope, while the project is getting executed, project manager has to uh, look at uh, uh, how the scope is going on, are we in line to the scope, are there any changes coming in. All those things a project manager has to look into. So first question for you, uh, probably you can uh, take a pen and then paper and then uh, put down the answer uh, next to you. You can uh, send across the answers towards the end of the webinar. Uh, when, sh when should the verify scope process be done? You have four choices there. At the end of the project, B is at the beginning of the project, C is at the end of each phase of the pro project, D is during the planning process. Uh, again, you can uh, put across your answer as 1A, 1B, 1C to 1, 1D, something like that. Okay, I'm going to the next slide. Uh, one more important thing is time management. Uh, um, so time management, as you, all of you know, the famous saying, which is time is money. Uh, if I quote an example again, Opera House, uh, which is in Sydney, uh, uh, it was uh, estimated to, uh, the original cost was estimated as $7 million, uh, and then uh, it is supposed to get completed in 1957. But it took uh, almost 10 years to complete and then uh, it, it overshoot the budget uh, uh, too much. I think it's almost, uh, uh, it reached one, one or two million dollars, which is a, quite a big number. Uh, again, a project manager can make sure that these things would not happen. Let's look at uh, uh, what are the different ways a project manager can do. So uh, different activities, so if, if you look at, uh, uh, as you had seen in previous work breakdown structure, which is in the simple terms WBS, we reach till work package is there. Now uh, we can divide the work package into smaller activities. That's what which is going to happen here. Suppose when I say smaller activities, if I say that a person need to const, uh, let's say manufacture a door, uh, so uh, smaller activities would be getting the steel and then pressing into the shape of the door, coloring the door, and then finishing the door. All those things will come as activities. So next one is sequence activities. So it is important to sequence activities. The reason being, uh, uh, suppose if I have, let's say, constructing the wall and then paint the wall, surely painting should happen only after constructing the wall, not the vice versa, which is not possible. The next one is uh, uh, estimate activity resources. What are the activities that we estimated, uh, sorry, uh, either defined or sequenced. We need to understand uh, what is the 
what are the uh, resources that are required? When I say resources, again, it's people, uh, material, and then equipment. All the things are important, not just the people. So uh, the next one is uh, estimate activity durations. As we have uh, now, we define activities, sequence activities, and also knows we also know uh, what kind of uh, uh, people we need. So we will be able to uh, estimate how long it's going to take. Again, this also, this also depends on people availability, equipment availability, and then the material accountability. Finally, we'll come up with something called defining, developing the schedule, uh, having all these parameters. Again, it's the project manager's responsibility to control the schedule. So control the schedule, again, there are a lot of calculations. If you go deep into time management, uh, something called end value management and all those things. So end value management is all about, uh, for by today, uh, what I am planning to complete and what I completed. So uh, then we'll be able to know whether we are within the schedule or ahead of the schedule or on the schedule. Uh, let's go to next slide. Cost management, uh, again important, if you looked at the previous example, right, the time and the money uh, almost inter inter interrelated. The reason being if a project gets delayed, a lot of other uh, aspects come into picture, something like inflation and then suppose somebody is doing a construction project, uh, probably the steel prices must go, might, might go up. So these both are very pretty much interrelated. Cost management, uh, we uh, do uh, only three things here. Uh, we would estimate the cost and then determine the budget, control the cost. To give an example for all these things, uh, suppose again I'll go back to the house example. If you're trying to construct a house, uh, probably we would say that initially uh, the, the total uh, budget for the house, let's say 60, 60 lakhs, but uh, my initial cost ideally should come to let's say 45 or 50 lakhs so that the remaining 10 lakhs I'm going to use for contingency in case let's say project gets delayed and then prices, uh, steel prices go, might go up and then cement prices might go up. So I'll be able to use that money uh, up to uh, the 10 lakhs money in case if there is any uh, impact on my schedule, sorry, impact on my budget. While the work is going on, it is also responsible to have the project manager to control the schedule. Let's go to, this is a picture which is going to demonstrate what I said just now. Uh, so you can see here, we have uh, uh, 1,250 as a project estimates. Again, this number came uh, by combining all these activities here. So it will, uh, if you come in all these things, it will come to this, this money. And then you have contingency reserves. Contingency I'm going to talk about uh, uh, when, I'm, when I'm going to talk uh, the, about risk management. And we will reach uh, something called cost based lens. So this is the cost that we would communicate to the stakeholder saying that I'm going to spend the $1,355 to complete this project. And then there is something called uh, uh, management reserve. This is usually with the sponsor. And then, suppose, I mean, management reserve is usually used uh, for the unmanaged risks. Suppose, let's say, some, something like tsunami or terrorist attack, whatever, we will not be able to guess them that they are going to come. So, there should be some money allocated uh, uh, in the reserve, and then only sponsor can release this money. If we add uh, all these two, we are going to get something like cost budget. If I go back to the previous slide, this is what I am talking, determined budget. Let's go to quality management again uh, quality management is also one of the important aspect uh, while the entire organization is responsible for quality management again the ultimate responsibility always goes with the project manager there are three processes here first thing is a project manager uh, should plan for the quality into the project it should not happen that okay client or customer would say that uh, quality is poor so let's start something it should not be uh, that case as soon as the project getting started the project manager should be in a position to uh, look at uh, what are the different plans that I should have uh, in place. Second one is quality assurance. This is mainly to ensure uh, the right to quality standards that are used and also time to time we need to look at uh, whether these standards are right or we need to improve something upon. And then we look at uh, quality control aspects as well. So uh, overall quality management we use a few tools like uh, Fishbone diagram which is uh, otherwise also called as Ishikawa diagram and then 80-20 principle uh, also called as Pareto uh, chart and then uh, histograms and all those things. So uh, again, this is an exiting area. Uh, so uh, the reason being why I, why I said exiting is uh, uh, ultimately uh, we need to, a uh, project manager need to make sure that the stakeholders are happy. So quality management is one area where uh, if you produce great quality, project stakeholders will be happy. So one second question to you, uh, how do you define quality? Options, again, four options for you. Uh, a is meeting and exceeding the customer's expectations. B adding extras to make the customer happy, C, the degree to which the project meets requirements, D, conformance to management's objectives. So again, you can answer either 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. I'm going to go to the next slide. Uh, 
most important thing of a project manager's life is uh, uh, communications management. It is said that uh, from an analysis, uh, close to 80% of the project manager's time uh, goes into communication. And uh, which means that when I say communication, uh, uh, even uh, having the meetings with the team members, stakeholders, and then uh, um, um, vendors, project teams within the organizations, outside the organizations, suppose if you're dealing with uh, government kind of uh, projects, then you have to speak with the government, uh, um, government authority and all those things. So a uh, lot of time uh, goes into communications uh, for a project manager. Let's look at what are the different things a project manager should do here. Uh, I did mention about identify stakeholders when I was talking about integration management. This is the place where we would identify what are the stakeholders that are important for my uh, project. So stakeholders, uh, again, the definition itself uh, sometimes might be confusing. If you look at the stakeholders here, there are many things, uh, sorry, stakeholder definition, as I said, might be confusing. But a stakeholder is typically uh, a person or group of people uh, who would have either positive or negative interest on the project. When I say negative interest, suppose, let's say, if there is, I mean, I will probably in part of Bangalore, I would quote, uh, let's say, a Bangalore Metro project uh, when the construction uh, goes on. So there might be some hesitation. Uh, people would have said that uh, we do not want to lose our uh, land here, so I do not want to encourage Bangalore Metro to uh, go on. So ideally, these people also should be considered stakeholders, so because project manager is responsibility to make sure that their interests are also met. So because uh, at the end, as I said, the success of the project always depends on the project manager. Next important thing is plan communications. And, uh, this is also important because uh, the stakeholder information, um, what are the needs of the stakeholder information that is uh, going to be uh, dealt here. So uh, to give an example, a, a sponsor might be interested to look at uh, milestones, but your team members would be like, uh, interested to look at uh, what are the different activities that they need to perform in the next 10 days. Suppose if the information is vice versa, the purpose of the information is lost. And then also, a uh, stakeholder probably would like to get the information from the project manager, not necessarily from the team member. Uh, so uh, again, that kind of uh, planning should be there with the project manager. So once the information is available, it is the responsibility of the project manager to distribute the information. The next one is, uh, goes with the famous uh, quote from uh, um, um, founder of Walmart, so, uh, Walmart store, so Sam Walton. He says that high expectations are key to everything, and as you see, the world is ever changing and then uh, the expectations from the stakeholders are also ever increasing. It is uh, absolutely project manager's responsibility to manage the stakeholder expectations. So this goes with the building the right trust, giving the right information, and then uh, making sure that the right risks are identified and highlighting to the stakeholders. All those things need to be done. Let's go to second one, uh, the famous quote from um, uh, Chanukya, which he said during the, um, before Christ. Um, for many, it's not coming at the proper time. Uh, I mean, uh, to give a snapshot of this, so if somebody gives a wrong report, uh, Chanukya feels that they should be uh, fined for 10% of the amount, uh, so which is a big amount. So it also goes with uh, PMI also says the same thing. Um, uh, the project, right project management practices also the same thing. So we should uh, report the right performance and then uh, right, uh, collect the right information, distribute it, and then also the uh, send across the right measurements to different people and also write forecast. When I say write forecast, if the project, if the project manager knows that project is going to uh, delay by uh, uh, two months, project manager should not hide it. It should always be the right information. The next important thing, which is my favorite topic, is uh, human resource management. Um, uh, human resource man uh, management is all about uh, how do we organize the team and then manage and then lead the people. Um, Again, it is the responsibility of the project manager to make sure that uh, we have the right people recruited for the project. And uh, probably a uh, lot of project managers, they would think that it is the responsibility of the human resource management team to recruit the people, but it is not. Though they would help the project manager to, or assist the project manager to do that, but its ultimate responsibility is always lies with the project manager. So I'm going to introduce something called RACI here. Before that, uh, the process here is uh, developing uh, human resource uh, management plan, uh, which is which all goes with uh, identifying the right roles and responsibilities. And this one tool itself will uh, take away close to 80% of the project conflicts because sometimes most of the team members they would complain saying that I do not know to whom I'm reporting, I do not know uh, what work I'm doing, and then I do not know what is my responsibility in the project. So using the right RACI, RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consult, and Inform. 
So you can see a sample uh, race here. Here, if you can see, uh, uh, Nagesh is uh, accountable for design, accountable for, accountable for development, accountable for testing, and then responsible for project management. If you look at Prasanna, is uh, uh, in, is uh, he will be informed on the design, he will be informed on the development, and he is responsible for the testing. And however, anything related to the project management, he will be informed. So that's a, a nice tool to have. The second step is once we have the roles and responsibilities, uh, we will have. Uh, we need to acquire the project team. As I said, it is the responsibility of the project manager to uh, bring the best in class team into the project. So uh, this is the place where the project manager has to recruit the right people. The second, uh, sorry, the third process again, uh, Chanika says that uh, when the prince is ready for knowledge, experts should train him. Here, uh, what it goes is the project manager should always uh, make sure that his team members are equipped to do the job best. So now, um, having said that, it doesn't mean that project manager has to sit and then uh, um, educate and then uh, uh, teach the lessons to the people one to one, but it is uh, basically to understand what is their skill set right now, what are the requirements uh, for the project and their personal aspirations and then how they can improve their skills, what is the help this project manager can give. And uh, maybe the one help a project manager can do is out of well, let's say 100 days, uh, five days or ten days, the project manager would allocate uh, training time to the team members so that the only ninety percent of the times they will be working on the project. Again, um, um, I mean the reason for quoting uh, Chanika is uh, most of these principles they were uh, told by Chanika some long back, uh, many years back. But uh, uh, having uh, using those uh, small little things, uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, project can be uh, can see great success. So Chanika said, uh, again, uh, use Sama, Dana, Dhanda, Veda to rule, which means that uh, first you show the friendship and then after that you give up something and uh, finally if that doesn't work, you punish the person, that also doesn't work, make sure the person leaves. So uh, this also goes with managing the project team in the right way, uh, so tracking the team performance and then the providing the right feedback through appraisal process or one-to-one -one meetings and then any uh, conflicts and then issues must be resolved with the project manager. Project manager has to stand responsible for the any conflict within the project, when I say within the project, it should be, it, it might be within the team members, it might be within the team members and then the stakeholders, all those things need to be uh, managed very effectively. Question to you, uh, I in race stands for ignore, inform, ideate and involve. So again, you can answer 3A, 3B, 3C, 3D, depending on uh, what you, what is the right answer. I'm going to go to the next slide. So risk management, if I ask you, I wish uh, I, I do this session face-to-face uh, -face because most of the times when I ask this question uh, to a bigger audience, there will be uh, multiple responses. Somebody might say that it is a risk, somebody might say it is not risk and uh, uh, probably the bachelors, they would just smile and then keep quiet. Uh, so marriage, in my view, is a risk. The reason being uh, uh, marriage also is a lottery because we do not know uh, the outcome of a marriage. But let's look at uh, how it is related to the risk. Uh, risk, uh, if I would like to define, it is an uncertain event or condition that uh, affects the project. So when I say affects the project, either it could be positively or negatively. Again, as it goes with marriage, the marriage can be successful, the marriage also can be failure. We do not know uh, until we go on and experience it. So uh, again, uh, the ultimate responsibility of the project manager lies with uh, identifying the uh, right risks and then managing and then controlling them uh, on a timely basis. Let's go to the uh, next slide. And uh, uh, you can see uh, one question there, uh, do we need to be positive always? Uh, when I was doing uh, one session on project management, sorry, uh, risk management sometime back, one of the project managers asked uh, uh, most of these uh, motivation books, they always ask us to be positive. So you were asking, uh, uh, think something which, is, which might uh, impact us negatively. So is this the right thing? Uh, so my answer was, uh, if, if you take an example of a cat, a uh, cat especially when it is drinking milk, it closes the eyes and then drinks the milk. Uh, the uh, what cat cat thinks is uh, if I close the eyes and then drink milk, uh, even somebody says I will not be able to see them, so I'll uh, at least I'll uh, drink happily. But I think in the real time scenario, even if there is a person, probably cat would miss the person, so it might probably end up uh, in a uh, wrong situation. So uh, again, uh, uh, when I say a person has to think about this, it's nothing to do with the negativity. Uh, so it's basically. Uh, because at the end we need to make sure that our sponsor is happy and our stakeholders is happy, it's not for us actually. So we need to think uh, uh, both negatively and positively to just to make sure that uh, uh, project goes successfully. So in the risk management plan, uh, it all goes with uh, how do you approach to the risk management process. 
So it goes with, uh, as I said, the project manager, sponsor, project team, stakeholder, all the people will be involved along with the experts. Uh, so that uh, in case if you're trying to do some, let's say if you're trying to implement a completely new technology into the organization, we do not have the right people to understand the risk. So we will go and then speak to the consultants and the experts. So that is the reason they also should be involved. The first step here is uh, to do the identifying the risk, risks. So again, uh, as I said earlier, the, all the people that are involved in the project should be involved. So including the stakeholders, sponsors, and the experts in case they're available. And it is important to uh, create the right atmosphere in the uh, project. Why I'm stressing this point is uh, uh, when, when I ask people why Titanic sank, there are multiple answers that would come, but I think the actual reason is uh, even when the uh, ship is being built, uh, the people who are uh, involved in the manufacturing, they have their own doubts whether uh, this much ship, whether it's going to uh, sail through successfully, but however, because they were all afraid of their managers, they were not able to open their mouth and then uh, put across their thoughts forward. So that is the reason it is always important to uh, in, uh, listen to the team members and then uh, uh, give some weightage to their ideas and then see uh, the best risk management can happen out of that. The next one is uh, qualitative risk analysis. I would like to introduce something called the probability and then impact analysis matrix here. So here you can see probability. Probability, I think the general definition is the, uh, the probability is uh, the chance of that uh, any event uh, that, that's been happening. So if I flip a coin, it would be 0.5 uh, head or 0.5 tile. Impact is, uh, suppose if it happens, what kind of impact it's going to cause. Again, this number can be, uh, it can be 10, 20, 30, depending on the, you can do whatever you want. So suppose uh, the matrix goes something like this. You would multiply uh, impact with the probability, which is come to 0 0.81. So you can use this as a reference document. Uh, so if you look at the, uh, risks here, suppose illness, it says probability is 0 0.1 and then impact, if there is illness, probably there is a impact over schedule, which is uh, worth of 0 0.7. So multiply this 0 0.07, this is green here, because this is green. So probably we may not do much uh, about uh, that particular risk. However, if you take attrition, the probability is 0 0.5 percent and then impact is 0 0.7, because absenteeism uh, might impact the project. And then the, uh, you can see 0 0.35, which is uh, red here, so there is red here. So then uh, we'll have to come up with uh, some uh, ma uh, some management plan there. The next one is uh, quantitative uh, risk analysis. Uh, so here I, I, I try to explain quickly with an example. So suppose a person is traveling from Bangalore to Pune, the flight costs around uh, 9,000 rupees and then uh, if the person leads, uh, reaches uh, late to Pune, it's going to cost him around the, uh, the late, I will not say late fee, but he's going to lose 40,000 rupees. If the flight, the probability of flight being uh, reaching on time is 90%, so the, and the, these are the different conditions for flight B, so 3,000 rupees is the flight charge and then the on time uh, probability is 70%, late and it's going to remain same. So now which flight the person has to take, uh, answer is uh, flight A, you can look at the calculation here, so 9,000 is the money which is anyways going to lose and then 4,000 came. 10% of uh, this one, so that is 13,000. So overall, this person might lose 13,000 if the person takes flight A versus uh, flight B is going to take, uh, 50, is going to lose 15,000. So in this scenario, obviously, uh, he's going to save 2,000 here, so he's going to take flight A. This is an example of quantitative risk analysis. Let me go through the risk responses. So this is uh, basically looking at uh, how do we uh, manage the risk. Most of the times, again, uh, people tend to say, mitigation plan, but there are, uh, other than mitigation, there are multiple things a project manager can do. A project manager can completely avoid the risk by not doing the project, and then control, which is also called mitigation, and then a project manager can accept the risk, and then also transfer the risk. Transfer the risk usually whether we will uh, involve a third party vendor, or we will buy an insurance. Or insurance. So suppose if you look at uh, uh, acceptance, there are two things. One is active acceptance, one more is passive acceptance. Acceptance. When it's a passive acceptance, we would not do anything, uh, but when it comes to uh, active acceptance, uh, we will have some contingency money that is uh, uh, reserved for the uh, project. If you remember in the cost management, I did talk about the contingency reserve. This is what uh, uh, what I mean. Suppose if there is a, there is a risk, uh, uh, as of now it is still as a risk, but uh, let's say after two months, if the risk materializes and then becomes an issue, I have some money to uh, look after that issue. Suppose, give an example. Um, uh, still, uh, I would say that there is a risk of steel prices would go up by 10% in another six months. 
and then uh, my let's say and also there is the probability that my project gets delayed by six months then i'll have to reserve some 10 percent extra money uh, so that in case the project gets delayed beyond six months i'll be able to use that extra money however if the project uh, doesn't get delayed and gets completed in two months obviously i'm going to save that money so finally what makes a project manager happy uh, is to do the right monitoring and control as you see here let's go to uh, fourth question Risk management uh, must be completed uh, in dash, the pl uh, planning phase, so uh, four choices here, end of the planning phase, middle of the planning phase, early in the planning phase, or any time in the planning phase. Again, you can answer as 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D. I'm going to the next slide. <coughs> Procurement management, uh, uh, again, uh, not many project managers uh, might get an opportunity to do this. Suppose if I again pose a question to you. Uh, suppose if you were in MG Road in Bangalore and then you wanted to go to uh, Whitefield, which is an approximately 20 to 25 kilometers, will you hire a taxi or uh, uh, buy a taxi? Uh, uh, again, I'm, unfortunately, I could not hear back your answer, but uh, the uh, I mean, surely the right answer would be to hire a taxi because just because you want to travel 20 kilometers, you would not buy a taxi. So this also goes with the uh, uh, procurement process where uh, we do want to, suppose to give an example, uh, a company has to deliver a project within uh, 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 six months with, by using 200 extra additional people. It doesn't make sense for the company to uh, hire all those 2,000 people because after the six months, uh, surely these people may not be doing anything else in the company. So it is better to go for an vendor who, who are going to supply those people instead of uh, recruiting all the people. Uh, again, it is the project manager's responsibility to ensure that all the legal obligations are met because uh, procurement management also involves in uh, signing the contracts. So project manager has to understand the uh, language that is available in the contract. <coughs> there are uh, four things here. Uh, the first the process is to plan the procurement. Uh, it is important uh, for us to take a call whether we wanted to uh, do in-house or to buy the services from the outside vendor. So as it uh, simple as uh, in the taxi case, it is very simple because it is just 25 kilometers. But suppose if uh, I have to use the taxi for uh, or the car for let's say next four years, maybe I would not prefer to hire a car but I would want to buy a car. If I do not know the driving, I would look at hiring a driver. But uh, but but in very uh, rare cases, I would go and then uh, uh, hire taxi daily. So that is the call that we are going to make there. Once that call is made, we will have to do the conduct procurement, which means that we will have to uh, uh, send the information to different sellers and then get their responses. You must have heard something called uh, request for proposal and uh, uh, request for the bid. So all those things are going to uh, come and then sit here. Uh, third uh, process is again uh, because this work is being done by the project team which is outside of the uh, performing organization it is again the project manager has to be cautious of the fact that uh, uh, they do not have a direct one-to-one uh, uh, -one relationship or the line manager relationship so uh, they need to have the right uh, reports so that is circulated and then make sure that the uh, uh, contract obligations are met finally when everything is done uh, project manager will successfully close the project so uh, one more question to you, uh, if you look at uh, this question, once signed, a contract is legally binding unless, uh, again four options here, one party is unable to uh, perform, either seller or buyer, B is one party is unable to finance its part of the work, which is again either B or, uh, sorry, seller or buyer, C is it is in violation to the applicable laws, which are government laws uh, within that country or state, and D is it is declared null or void by either parties. Uh, legal counsel, which means that either seller's legal counsel or buyer's legal counsel says that this uh, project is uh, uh, valid, uh, invalid. So uh, again, you can choose 5A, 5B, 5C, 5D. Uh, one of them you can send across. I'm going to the next slide. Again, it is uh, um, ultimate responsibility and then the skill of the project manager. Though I, I had said uh, if I combine all this process, it comes to around uh, 42 process, 9 knowledge areas, and then 5 phases. Uh, is it required for all the process to be followed in any project? Not necessarily. Uh, it depends on the project to project. And then the, suppose if it is a small project which is going to go for 2 months, you will not do a extensive risk management and extensive communications management. It's going to be one page. But if it is a project which is going to go for 5 years, having uh, 200 stakeholders, and then runs across 10 different countries, then the intensity is going to be quite bigger. So it is the ultimate responsibility of the project manager to uh, be on top of what the uh, project team is doing. 
and uh, I do want to touch upon how to start, uh, uh, how somebody can start a career in project management as you see here. No one is born, born as project management as is uh, true for, no one, no one is born as a leader. So all these skills can be learned. So I tried to put across nine points uh, which not necessarily in a sequence but uh, uh, initially the person should understand uh, uh, how to capture the requirements, uh, how to do the estimation and then how to schedule the work by looking at the dependencies. And then uh, it is always good to start with small modules instead of going with the bigger projects uh, where the project management responsibility still lies with the project manager and then uh, as an individual you will be able to uh, manage the small modules. And then it is essential to work with the people uh, effectively and uh, without, uh, I mean especially in the IT industry or uh, as we are in the knowledge economy, without the people uh, none of the work is going to move. So it's absolutely mandatory that uh, a person should be in a position to communicate and then work effectively with the people. Uh, one dilemma comes to the, uh, most of the managers is, uh, they, I mean, suppose they are very good at doing the coding and then the design and then development. So if I lose the control, probably my, some of my expertise is going to go. But however, delegation is the right tool. Uh, delegating with the right confidence and then uh, delegation itself is an art. Uh, a per person has to know what to delegate and what to not to delegate. While delegation happens, again, the responsibility still goes to the project manager. Sorry, I'm sorry, accountability still goes with the project manager. Fifth point is it is uh, uh, pretty much mandatory uh, that the project manager should have very good networking skills uh, within the organization and outside the organization. This is important because suppose uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a project requirement where you need to have a uh, server which ideally comes from the infrastructure team. Suppose if you go with the SLAs and then uh, the official channel probably it might take uh, two months to procure it. But suppose if you uh, have the right contacts and then probably the work can be done within a week or within a day also. Uh, it is also important to work with the difficult stakeholders uh, because, because uh, as I said stakeholders are also human beings and their expectations are ever changing and then you need to understand why uh, they look like difficult uh, and then a person should not hesitate to work with the difficult stakeholders. Um, um, having the right team uh, is a very important so it is also responsible of the project manager to recruit the right people and uh, as, is, as I mentioned earlier 80% of project managers time goes into communication so written and then oral communication skills are uh, uh, most important finally uh, right information always uh, is going to build the trust uh, to the stakeholders to the team I mean why I'm saying this is uh, sometimes uh, probably your team knows that uh, the project is uh, is in trouble but let's say uh, in front of your team uh, a project manager uh, uh, says to stakeholders that everything is uh, on track. So the person is going to lose the confidence from the team uh, and uh, eventually uh, the truth is going to come down. As uh, once Gautam Buddha said that there are three things that can't be done for long. One is sun, moon and then truth. So uh, I'll quickly touch upon uh, uh, certifications that are available. Uh, um, surely uh, one thing that comes across to our mind is PRINCE2 uh, which is a simpler form of projects in control, controlled environment. There are uh, two uh, things here, one is Prince2 uh, Foundation and then second one is uh, Prince2 Practitioner. Prince2 uh, Foundation certificate uh, goes for three days uh, uh, training and then uh, there is a test and then uh, uh, Practitioner total five days including Foundation. A person can only become a Practitioner uh, only when the person completes Foundation. So this uh, copyright of Prince2 belongs to UK Office of Governments and Commerce because uh, these are the, uh, this is the organization who started this uh, uh, Prince to concept uh, altogether. Initially they wanted to implement this Prince to concepts into uh, all the UK government projects but later on uh, uh, I think uh, close to 25 companies uh, came together and then they formed a consortium and then uh, they came up with these standards. Total cost of this certification would be anywhere around 55,000 to 60,000 if somebody is doing in India but I think if somebody is doing in UK uh, it's going to be a little costly. You can get uh, more information from this uh, site which is www.prince2.com. Um, let's go to uh, PMP uh, which is a project management professional. Uh, uh, this comes from uh, PMI, Project Management Institute based out of uh, USA. Uh, according to PMI, uh, the uh, recent survey of 6th uh, edition, salary survey, uh, it, it came to know that uh, uh, people who are certified in PMP, they get 10% uh, more than uh, uh, people who are not certified and uh, according to a 2007 uh, survey by Coopers, they said that 80% of the high performing projects use the credentialed project managers. 
If you look at the eligibility, I'm sorry, I did not mention the eligibility of Prince to Prince to um, as such, there is no uh, hard eligibility, but the expectation is that the person is uh, person knows uh, some things about the project management uh, before they attend the course. But uh, PMP got a, a very strict eligibility. A person should complete four years degree and then uh, three years of project management experience and then uh, 4,500 hours of the uh, leading the projects. What it means is uh, the person designations not necessarily should be project manager. The person uh, can be project lead or module lead, but some things like estimation, breaking down the work, uh, and then doing the scheduling, all those activities must have been done by the person. Along with this, uh, the person should have 35 hours of the project management formal education, which means that some of the training institutes they would offer. The second scenario is uh, a secondary diploma. In our scenario, it could be uh, plus two or a diploma. Uh, the person should have five years of experience and then uh, 7,500 hours of uh, uh, leading the projects and 35 hours of training. So when it comes to PMP, uh, the total cost comes to uh, 35,000 to 45,000. Again, uh, this is including the training. Uh, training usually they charge around uh, 10,000 to uh, 20,000 depending on the training institute. And then the fee uh, to take this exam comes to around uh, 26,000 depending on the dollar conversion rate. And then my, again, it's, it's not my personal view. What I did was I gave a search in uh, three different job sites. I did not mention the job site's name, but you can look at uh, some of the uh, popular job sites in India. Um, so PMP, uh, in the same site, uh, PMP jobs are there around 414. Prince 2, there are around 17. Overall, uh, you can look at the ratio. Overall, there are around 695 jobs for PMP. And then Prince 2, we have only 37. However, this uh, uh, ratio is uh, quite opposite when I look at uh, UK job sites. But however, generally, if you look at uh, US, uh, uh, most of the companies in US recognize PMP, not Prince 2. Uh, but again, uh, it, this is not uh, my personal opinion. This is just I put across uh, the statistics that are available in the job sites. Let's look at the last one. I want to conclude saying that knowledge without common sense is nonsense. So uh, this all goes with, uh, uh, I mean, usually uh, this is something which I often hear from the project management uh, trainings or, or the seminars. So the story goes something like this. There are the, uh, two people. Uh, one person digs a hole and then another person uh, fills that hole with the same mud. And then uh, uh, they continuously start doing this for uh, uh, 100 holes. And then one person watches this and then understand. He, he was not able to understand what's happening uh, uh, with these two people. They're just digging and then one person is again uh, putting across the mud again. So uh, he goes and then asks, uh, uh, sir, we actually wanted to uh, plant the samplings, but the person who is supposed to plant the samplings is absent today, but we do want to complete our work today itself. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, so any any uh, theory or the certificate or the knowledge, uh, people should have the common sense. I think I'm uh, delighted to uh, see that there is uh, one session tomorrow, um, how to use the common sense, probably uh, if you are interested, you can join that webinar as well. Uh, these are my contact details. Uh, you can reach me at ravindraprasad at yahoo.com or LinkedIn. Uh, you can uh, look at me at ravindraprasad and then Twitter, ravindraprasad again. And you can also look at my uh, blog. Uh, usually I write on, uh, uh, so I name it as uh, small and beautiful word. I wanted to write on uh, painting and uh, sports and uh, whatever the good things happening in the world to make the people happy. So uh, with that, uh, I'm done with my time and also with my presentation. I think I'm pretty much on time. Um, so, uh, Bharat, uh, uh, what else? Will you know? Thank you, sir. Uh, actually, I have shared you uh, shared with you the questions list uh, through the chat okay. available. Let me look at that. Uh, These questions we have received uh, during the session. So, I should look at uh, uh, which chart? In the software only, you would have got it through questions. Um, so I'm able to see only uh, we are going to start five minutes after that I could not see. Anything. There's a question section. And second show. So questions I uh, yeah. I'm not able to uh, because the box is small here. Uh, you can click on uh, there is an. Uh, extract button which opens out as a pop-up so I could see one question uh, 
how is the probability in the PA matrix is calculated? What are the tools used? So, right. can I go ahead and answer? Yeah, that? yeah, you can go ahead. So, I, I, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, probability uh, and then impact matrix is again uh, uh, can vary from ordination to ordination, and then suppose uh, uh, if I give an example, suppose uh, if there is a project which has a government regulation uh, where the say uh, the tax calculation must happen on July thirty first. So uh, for this calculation, for this particular project, uh, the uh, impact on the schedule is going to be quite high. So uh, any deviation, uh, any deviation other than zero can be called as high impact. However, uh, suppose if I take uh, any other project where we just wanted to give an additional feature of the functionality to the stakeholders, even if we delay uh, one week, I'm not go it's not going to hit us uh, very badly. So uh, this is a direct uh, multiplication. We have the probability as a number, surely uh, one to hundred percent or uh, 0 0.12, 0 0.9, 0 0.9 versus an impact can be 10, 20, 50 uh, or 60. So you multiply these two things and then you get the final number. So that's how it is calculated. As I said, uh, an organization can define its own uh, PA matrix. There is no hard and fast tools that you need to use only uh, one single one. I have no so few that questions. answers that goes in or no? Uh, could you see other questions? Otherwise, uh, can, I, can I speak out those questions? Uh, I'll try to. Some of this uh, box is not. Um, uh, you can click out. There's so, like it opens. You said that I need to click on something, right? Uh, right. Uh, on the questions as a header, you can see like on the right hand oh, side, no. there's a second to the left. Uh -huh. uh, if you click on that, it opens as a pop up. It's okay. I'm able to see oh, very little, but anyway. So uh, one more person, Akshay Tadla asked, which tool uh, will be effective for cost management to Kokomo or Delphi? Again, these are all estimation techniques. So again, um, um, there are a lot of uh, methods actually. How the top-down approach, bottom-up approach. Uh, people might use uh, simple, medium, complex function points, and then recently we have something called cosmic function points. Uh, I think I would probably leave uh, this call to the uh, experience of the project manager. It all goes with uh, if, if a tool worked for a project manager uh, well in one of the project, probably the project manager might want to use the same tool. So there is no hard and fast tool that uh, it has to be uh, Kokomo or Delphi. It can be uh, any tool as far as it gives the right results. And uh, the way which a project manager can only uh, understand whether it is right or not, once if you do the, let's say even a project manager can experiment saying that okay, I will do the estimation using two tools and then uh, at the end of the project I will compare back to the results and then uh, then I will understand whether it is Delphi or function point. Then going forward Paul I will use the function point or Delphi depending on the results. Uh, so what type of, um, yeah, so one more uh, question was asked by, um, I could not get the name here, but uh, what type of information uh, may distribute for stakeholders? I think uh, the person uh, means what kind of information uh, must be distributed to stakeholders. So this is something uh, a project manager uh, must uh, uh, involve the stakeholders in the initial. So what I mean is uh, when the communication plan is happening, project manager has to speak to the stakeholders and understand their needs of information. As I said, if a sponsor says that I'm only interested uh, uh, to know when the project is uh, in trouble, uh, but otherwise I do not want it to know day-to-day uh, -day status. So then uh, probably project manager would not send that information. However, a stakeholder uh, sorry, sponsor might say that I do want you to get a weekly status report, we would send across. Our st sponsor also can say that uh, I do want you to look at the milestone completion, so that also can be done. So this is basically the agreement that is going to be put across in the communications management plan. Um, I'll pick up one more question. What is the most critical risk in project management? <laughs> uh, again, I think this uh, goes with the project to project. Um, as I said earlier, suppose if it is a, um, suppose somebody is doing a uh, government uh, uh, regulation project and then the stakes uh, of that not doing on time is going to be very high. So anything that is going to obstruct the project can be called as a critical risk. So there is, it's, it's very difficult to uh, say that uh, standardized thing saying that okay, attrition is the critical risk or the availability of, non-availability of the knowledge is critical risk. It's difficult. Again, it depends on the project to project and then the kind of work the project manager is going to perform there. I'll pick up one more question. So someone asked, isn't, uh, isn't uh, communi 
contingency cost same as managed reserve. Uh, so uh, not I think probably meant uh, contingency cost is it same as uh, managed reserve? It's not actually. Uh, managed reserve is uh, ideally uh, would lie with the sponsor. Project manager will not have the direct access to that money. It's basically uh, what it means is uh, contingency cost is going to be uh, in the account of the project manager and uh, management reserve is going to be in the account of the sponsor. So surely the project manager can't take away the money uh, without the um, uh, acceptance of the sponsor. So that answers that question. One more question. Uh, again, uh, Akshay, third last one because since qualitative risk analysis will give 100 percent identification of the risk. Qualitative risk analysis uh, will not identify the risks because risks must be identified in the risk identification process. Qualitative risk analysis is only going to filter the risk. Suppose if I have 100 risks, surely I do not want to uh, spend uh, my entire time in looking at all the 100 risks. I do want to look at uh, the risks that, are, that got high probability and also high impact. What I mean? Suppose somebody is living in Japan, the probability of earthquake is going to be high and the impact is also going to be uh, uh, high. So probably if, if somebody is working there, they will look at uh, that as a uh, risk. Um, but somebody is in Bangalore, probably they will not uh, look at it as a risk because uh, the probable, the impact is going to be the same here as well. But however, the probability is going to be very, very small. So uh, again, I, I don't want to reiterate to saying that uh, Qualitative risk analysis is nothing to do with risk identification. It, it's going to filter the risks, whatever identified from the risk identification process. Uh, to, to, to one more question. Akshay asked a lot of questions. So, if choosing right people is responsible to the project manager, then what is the responsibility of HR manager? HR manager, as I said, uh, can only uh, support the project manager to do that activity because, as I said, uh, we would never see uh, uh, if a project is uh, uh, failure we will not be able to uh, say that my HR manager did not give me the right people so I was not able to deliver. So it's uh, it's, it's same as uh, I don't think Dhoni can complain uh, to the board saying that I was uh, not given the um, uh, right people to uh, win the World Cup. So that, that I don't think that's going to be a right complaint. So always goes with the captain of the ship. Next one, um, I'm going to skip uh, Akshay's question. Uh, let me look at uh, so this I answered already. Um, one more person asked, uh, do we consider failure cost uh, during this uh, estimation? Uh, we would not consider failure cost. But however, uh, we'll have to attribute some cost uh, related to the failure in the quality management when we're calculating the quality of cost. Uh, certification courses just help in getting your resume picked first. Sridharan uh, doesn't, uh, did, uh, Sridharan doesn't uh, Sridharan did not do any certification. Why certification is a hype? But uh, uh, it is, uh, I'm sorry, but, but it, it has no real benefit apart from one mention. I think, uh, again, uh, certification has its uh, own uh, drawbacks and then own advantages. If, uh, again, certification, as I said, it's a kind of a, you'll help the person to uh, get a right job, but it doesn't, unless the concepts are implemented in the, implemented in the job, the certification, the value is gone. It's basically just because somebody has an MBA degree, uh, doesn't mean that the person is going to be a great manager, but uh, the generic management skills also should be there for the person. So uh, hype for the certification, again, it goes with the organization to organization, person to person. It, not necessarily that all the organizations are behind the certifications. Some organizations would look at the experience rather than certification. Some organizations would look at certification, but I think especially the services companies, so uh, it is very easy for them to uh, sell a particular regime to the customer or the client, if, if they say that, okay, my, my project manager is certified, so the rest assured that the project will be delivered on time. But again, the, just having the certification doesn't guarantee the success or failure of the project, surely. Um, uh, any other questions? Uh, let me look at uh, So that was asked by Girish Agarwal. Uh, Bharat, did you find any questions which I did not answer? I'll pick up one more question from Akshay. How to manage the risk effectively? The first step is always identifying the right risks. So without having the right risks in place, we will not be able to uh, do the risk management effectively. Once the risks are identified, the next step is to uh, do the qualitative risk analysis where we're going to filter. As I said, if you identify 100 risks, uh, maybe uh, we'll be able to come down to 30 important risks. 
and then if you uh, still do the quantitative analysis, the 30 might become only 20. So that is the right way to do. And the important thing is um, during the risk management process, it is uh, important that uh, a person, uh, sorry, a project manager has to involve the team, stakeholders, if possible, sponsor, and then uh, if, if it is also possible, some of the end users. A question from Vinil Vishwanath. Uh, what about the interaction between BA and PM on gathering requirements? Okay. Sure. Yeah. In the uh, when it comes to scope management, as I said, the first uh, uh, first thing is to collect the requirements. So this is the place. Uh, the um, responsibility of doing this activity always lies with the business analyst or the function analyst, depending on the organization. Um, and then uh, a project manager. Uh, need to be accountable for this activity. The reason uh, to say project manager is accountable, project manager ideally knows who are the stakeholders, what are the expectations from the uh, sponsor, whether his team can deliver or not, all those things. So uh, there would be multiple interactions between uh, uh, project, sorry, uh, business analyst and then the project uh, manager. In some cases, uh, both of them uh, would, would, would be involved in uh, speaking to the stakeholders. Some cases, Probably one of the business analyst would do that, and then project manager uh, probably take a back seat, depending on the situation. But uh, when it comes to when the, the output of uh, this process is, uh, we have the requirement document in place. So requirement document uh, must be signed off by the project manager and also the uh, all the stakeholders who are involved in uh, giving the requirements. So they both need to work very closely in this particular phase. And the one more phase uh, they need to work very closely is the verify scope because this is the place where we are going to, I mean, I, I missed one more, define scope and then verify, verify scope. These are the places where uh, uh, business uh, analyst commitment to the business uh, will be tested. So these are the three uh, different areas they will be working very closely. And as I said, the responsibility always goes with the business analyst, the accountability lies with the project manager. Next question is from Amandi. Any other questions? Uh, uh, yes, sir. We have a pool of yeah. questions. Uh, how do we standardize the okay. cost estimation because of lot of regional and local factors? Because they are also responsible mm -hmm. for variation of cost of resources from one place to another. Absolutely, yeah. Sure. Great question. So, uh, I mean, as you know, in IT especially, we are working in a different geographies, different countries, different currencies. So there is uh, something called cost management plan. This is the place where we would say that uh, either we will use uh, Indian rupees or US dollars or, uh, uh, or let, let's say uh, UK pounds. And then uh, with that, probably one confusion of uh, which currency I'm speaking, that's going to go off. Um, so there will not be any confusion on the uh, all these things. However, uh, an equipment uh, that might uh, cost, let's say, $10 in India may cost uh, maybe $100 in UK. So all those considerations a project manager has to take and then the project manager also has the responsibility to see what is the best quality product that can be delivered within the, um, I'll not necessarily say low cost, best quality is always a factor, but uh, a manager has to look at uh, different options where this can be sourced uh, with the low, uh, low cost as well. This is from Pramod Lamb. Uh, how can yeah. you ensure that no stakeholder is left out when defining the scope mm -hmm. of the project? Sure. It's a different, it's a difficult thing actually because uh, identifying stakeholders, uh, uh, as I said, uh, it's, it's going to be initiated just after the charter is ready. And as soon as the, uh, as soon as uh, the, the best thing that can be done is, uh, let's say we speak to one stakeholder and then ask the person to uh, um, say, yes, sir, we are doing this project. Do you think anybody else will be positively or negatively impacted uh, by this project outcome? Then the person might say, yeah, um, there is uh, one more uh, uh, division of the team or the vertical uh, who might be impacted negatively or positively so why don't you speak to them. So the best thing is to ask the stakeholder themselves, that is one, one thing. Second one is, uh, yes, project manager has to understand the requirements and then how the requirements are going to fit into the uh, organization strategy. Then they will be able to know uh, when it's organization strategy whether it is going to impact marketing or finance or IT then uh, the project manager will be able to uh, understand that. Again, it's a combination of science and art. It's, there is no shortcut to say that, okay, we have different stakeholders, let's go with that. Uh, so first thing is to speak to the stakeholders directly so that they'll be able to give the reference to others. Second one is the person need to think holistically, saying that, uh, yeah, this is a bigger picture. This might impact some other place as well. From Next Samir, uh, this is from Samir. Is quality control restricted only to mm -hmm. project work or it 
or it also includes team quality too. Uh, uh, can you repeat that question, Bharat? I could not understand. Uh, I mean, is, is quality that? control restricted only to project work, or it mm -hmm. includes the team quality too? Team, team quality. quality, as in the resources. Uh, quality uh, management uh, doesn't talk about the team quality per se. When I say quality of the people, it will not talk. But uh, the outcome of the people. Uh, so suppose if I'm doing a, uh, if I'm delivering a um, software, so the outcome of uh, whatever I'm delivering, yes, it is, uh, it is uh, under the quality control, not necessarily the people quality. Uh, people quality, as I said, that is uh, dealt in the human resource management, not necessarily in the quality management. But I'm able to see the person. I'm able to open that. But anyway, go ahead and then ask questions. That is easy for me. This is from Pankaj. How should the project manager deal with stakeholders if the project is not on time? <laughs> Again, it uh, goes to the situation to situation. It, uh, as I said, the uh, first thing is to uh, building the trust. Once the trust is built, uh, uh, so uh, it, it's very easy for the project manager to go back and then uh, communicate the right thing or the truth to the stakeholders. Suppose if the project manager known to say the truth, whatever happens, uh, stakeholders are going to be appreciative of the fact that uh, project manager must have done all the things that are required for the uh, project to be successful. But in this particular scenario, probably uh, he was not able to do that because he or she was not able to do that because of the constraints. So they will be able to understand. What my, I have seen my personal experience is uh, telling, always telling the truth and then uh, say the right forecast if it is going to be late, it is going to be late, it is going to cost us uh, more money, we should communicate if there is an attrition, if there is a potential attrition and then communicate back to the stakeholders saying that this is what which is the situation. So I think uh, usually as I said stakeholders are also human beings, they would understand the challenges in delivering the project, they will they'll be able to appreciate your fact. Question of the day, uh, uh, what is the best practice for estimating uh, the time required for software project? Is it a uh, work breakdown structure? based or functional point based? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, um, um, work breakdown structure ideally is called as the bottom up approach and then function point is called as top down approach. Um, so, again, uh, <laughs> I will not be able to give a straight cut answer because the situation, depending on the situation, suppose you, you know, somebody has to bid for a project and then, uh, and then we need to give the uh, right uh, estimation or the close to close to uh, right estimation to the uh, let's say state clients then obviously it, it's very difficult for us to go to the work breakdown structure and then understand what are the lowest level that's where the function point is going to come into handy uh, using the function point analysis but when it comes to our day-to-day -day activities what what breakdown structure at WS is a uh, is an excellent tool uh, so that we'll be able to break down the estimations into lowest level if you look at uh, function point estimation uh, is uh, not very accurate, but WS is going to be 100% accurate, close to 100% accurate, provided the, the what was uh, broken down into small pieces. Um, as I said, depending on the situation, a project manager has to use the right tools. And so in the similar lines, let's say project manager has to give a rough estimation to the uh, sponsor, um, function point is going to be very handy uh, versus uh, if they have to give the lowest level of estimation once the uh, requirements are captured, then sponsor would ask you, yes, you gave me uh, 1 million pounds, uh, can you tell me how it, uh, how much it's going to cost? Then we'll be able to, because we're able to uh, break down the project into smaller pieces, we'll be able to come in all those things and say that, yeah, uh, though I gave 1 million pounds, um, when I looked at the calculation, it comes to around 1.5 million pounds. So uh, I, I think a sponsor would be happy to hear those things. Next question, Bharat. Bharat. Actually, we are running short of time. That's the reason. Uh, so, Bharat, I'm not, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we are running short of time. That's okay. the reason we could not take any more question. But uh, sure, I'll share all okay. the questions which we received to you. Sure, yeah, great. Yeah, sure. I'll be able to answer. Paul, I'll spend some time uh, uh, today evening to answer some of the questions that are posted in the website as well. Sure. Uh, so, I'll spend um, some time. And uh, if you have any questions, you can probably send across to me and now. Uh, uh, answer uh, before uh, tonight. Sure, sir. Um, that's all right. Is there anything? Uh,
Thanks, Mr. Prasad, for that informative session. Yeah. I'm sure it has been very insightful for our audience as well. I would like to thank our participants for making this webinar a great success. Hope for your continued patronage for our further initiatives. Uh, the recording of this webinar will be available on TechGeek tomorrow along with your queries answered. The second session of the project management series will be held on August 4th, Friday from 3 p.m. The next session will be bringing forth the unused common sense in project management. This session will be conducted by Pavan Vaswani, Director, Sapin Corporation. Looking forward to seeing you all next Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all of you.